We offer the customers of our food ordering platform the ability to get a personalized iOS and Android application. And to date, we manage over 100 of these applications. In this video, I'll be detailing how I'm able to create these apps and manage them without breaking a sweat. I'll be covering our entire setup, build and submission process. But before we do, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started. Our applications are created using Expo. We offer our merchants the ability to customize their app icon and color palette through a very basic form. And the data we capture gets put in a Trello list. This way, we're able to track the progress of every individual app along the way. We have one single mono repository that holds the configuration files and assets for every single app. The apps all follow a similar template and using environment variables, we're able to customize them. I created a starter kit on my GitHub that I'll link below to show you how you can configure multiple tenants in an Expo setup using environment variables. If you open the code base and run yarn start, we'll be immediately presented with an error because the tenant environment variable is required. My starter kit has two tenants configured. We have our first tenant and we have our second tenant. If we want to start the application using the first tenant configuration, we can do so as follows. We can say tenant equals first tenant yarn iOS. And here we'll be presented with the application for our first tenant. If you want to see the configuration of the second tenant, we can set the environment variable to the second tenant and we can run yarn iOS again. And now we can see our app has loaded the second tenant configuration. If we open app.config.js, we'll see we try to load a configuration file from the configs directory. And the configuration file we try to load is set in the tenant environment variable. Looking into the configuration file of our first tenant, we can see we set things like the slug, the bundle identifier, the package, the icon, the splash screen, etc. As you can see here, the assets live in the first tenant directory under assets, first tenant, and we have our icons and our splash screen. And the app definition object is something we can use inside our view to customize our template. These config files get filled in the main app.config.js configuration file together with other configuration values like version or orientation that are not tenant specific. Assets are organized in their respective tenant directories and we have a global directory that, as you might have guessed, contains global assets like fonts. If we open our index.tsx file, we can see we reference the app definition variables to set things like the color and we read the name from our configuration file to set the title. Before building the app, we need to configure the Expo application service EAS for short, and we can do that by opening up EAS.json and we can add an entry for every tenant as follows. This is called a profile, and within this profile configuration, we need to let EAS know what the environment variables are. In our case, we need a tenant environment variable and we set that to the correct value. If you take a look at the build script, our tenant environment variable gets set as the profile. And this is needed because EAS runs in the cloud and has its own environment. Diving into app.config.js again, we'll see a key called asset bundle patterns, which prevents us from bundling assets from other tenants. We only include the global assets directory and the tenant specific directory. Before we can build a project for our tenants, we have to fill out the project ID. You can do this in the interface of EAS or you can simply run yarn build and EAS will try to configure it automatically. I prefer using the CLI, so let's do that. Let's say we want to have an iOS app and here we can see that EAS has already found a project for my second tenant with this ID. We need to copy this value and after we filled out our project ID in the tenant configuration file, EAS is able to build our tenant app successfully. Wasn't that easy? EAS has a submit feature that's able to submit the apps for you, and it works great. Unfortunately, this only works after you've submitted the apps in the stores once. 
and unfortunately that's still an entirely manual process for now. After the first manual submission, we're able to automate updates using EAS Submit without issues. Over the years, we've basically automated the entire process of creating an app, besides the first submission. I created a CLI that's able to pull all the apps from Travel, it will download and resize all the assets, create the necessary configuration files using Stubbs, and it will register the app to Firebase for Android push notifications. Creating an app is now a process that takes me around 15 minutes, and together with the first manual submission, I can do around 4 apps per hour, which is actually pretty decent. And that concludes the video. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I've linked the starter kit repository below, so be sure to check that out and let me know what you think or if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.